hello good morning um hopefully you enjoyed um uh, mr kessler's uh, explanation or brief introduction to the idea of using what we call compositional structures to guide um, abstract painting. We're going to be working in abstracts uh, for the next two weeks and mostly abstract paintings are sort of experiments and I'm going to show you a lot of different techniques for how to make abstracts. Um, and abstracts always feel really random, but abstracts, when they work well, use one of these main compositional structures and they also have what we call value structure or value range. Everything can't be the same value or the composition doesn't work. You don't have any place to rest your eye. And so, um, as you work on the, the your compositions, your abstracts, you're going to want to make sure that you're thinking about looking at them as black and white photos so that they have, uh, you can see the value structure as well as what you're using for color. So I have made a little sheet. I'm going to post uh, his PDF uh, to this assignment, but I copied these off on a piece of graph paper. Uh, just to show you them. And then over here on my screen, I have um, just a, a random artist who does little abstracts on Pinterest and um, we can look at these and then find the the compositional structure that best matches each one of these little abstracts. So when we think of a cruciform it is any time that we have um, elements go both vertical and horizontal and they cross each other. So this uh, would be a cruciform composition. Uh, this here would be considered an unbalanced composition because we have a bigger element and a smaller element and for the most part there's almost nothing else on the page. Um, here we could, and then for some of these we can argue multiple, right? So we have some curvilinear elements here where we have this circle of dots and then the circle and then this vague circle shape. So it's almost curvilinear, but it's also almost balanced because we have um, kind of elements throughout. Uh, and so like you can look at any of any abstract painter and you can kind of find what their compositional structure is. This one here would be kind of a combination between uh, vertical and cruciform. So even though we don't have that strong cross, we do still have those elements that go both directions. Uh, cruciform, I would say, is by far the most common compositional structure. Um, this here could almost be considered cruciform. Um, you know, there are a lot of um, abstract painters that work with that uh, structure. You know, and like I said, we can look at any of these like simple little abstract and find the compositional structure that is underneath them. So here's what I want you to do today. I want you to uh, play around with each of these 10 compositional structures um, by making some tiny little abstracts. So here's what I've done. I have taken uh, one of your sheets of watercolor paper. So this one is a separate sheet, um, not the sketchbook sheet. So here's my sketchbook paper, right, folded in half. Uh, here's one of the separate sheets of watercolor paper. If you um, don't have any of these left, you could go ahead and uh, use one of your sketchbook sheets. That's fine. But what I did with this is I took... Um, and used a ruler and divided this into uh, three inch squares. So I just uh, used a ruler. I measured three inches, three inches at the top, three inches, three inches at the bottom, drew a line, and then three inches all the way along. And I now have all of these little squares to paint on. And what I'm gonna do, and I'll move that out of the way, I'm gonna take my sketchbook actually and I'm just going to open it up to um, one of the sheets that's blank. 
what I need this for really is just um, like <laughs> paper towel, like scratch paper. If I have tape, I could tape these down so they all get a little white edge. Um, if you don't have tape, you can just go ahead and leave them loose. Uh, it's, it's fine either way, quite frankly. But what I'm going to do is I am going to kind of reference these. So you'll have to pull these up on your screen. I'm going to post the PDF um, so that you can see each of his 10. And I'm going to play and create uh, compositions that match um, this idea of the compositional structures. Uh, and I should have wet my paint beforehand. And we'll do a couple of other techniques as well, but these compositions are always going to be part of what we do. Um, it is actually, it's just definitely how abstract painting works. So I'm going to just go ahead and pick one of them. Um, and you can use some texture techniques. You can use shapes. Um, you know, you can use basically whatever, whatever you like um, to sort of create a little tiny abstract painting. So I'm thinking about that vertical structure first, and I'm going to start with some sort of different colors and I'm going to play around with, uh, primarily things that are, uh, obviously vertical <laughs> because it's a vertical compositional structure. It doesn't mean that my um, painting only has verticals, but you can see that I'm going to start out with kind of that in mind. I'm making marks. I'm letting my paint kind of mix wet into wet right now. And uh, at a certain point, I'm going to just have to let this dry before I come back to add any more uh, to my composition. Uh, I am going to add in a couple of darks. So remember I said it's that value structure that will help things to work. Um, I was feeling like mine was very, very light, kind of a little too cheery, so it needed some dark. Amazingly enough, that was purple on there. And right now I wish I had a paper towel. Let's see. Or actually, what might be sort of fun is I do have a piece of plastic wrap sitting here. So I'm going to go ahead and just experiment with um, sticking some plastic wrap down on that guy. And we're just going to let that one dry. And I'll come back and I will paint on it more uh, once it's dry. So don't be afraid to kind of experiment with um, alcohol, salt, plastic wrap, um, if you have some stamps or some elements that you can use to stamp, like don't be, uh, afraid to sort of play around with, um, this abstract idea. And that's exactly what I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to kind of keep playing around here. Um, thinking now about that kind of cruciform structure and then just knowing too that they're, they're going to have to get painted in phases like there isn't a way to like paint especially when we're working in watercolor like there isn't a way to like finish one obviously if you guys have other paint at home you can feel free to explore this with um, any other sort of paint that you like um, again I'm kind of thinking of this cruciform structure right now um, and uh, trying to think about what else I'm going to do on here other than let it dry for a little while. <laughs> let it dry, let it dry. Maybe a little bit of salt on this one might be fun. The things you have handy sometimes. All right. We'll let that one dry for a bit. And so you can see these little squares are like really buckling up. A little bit of tape would be genius um, 
if you have some, you know, that will help dramatically. I'm going to, again, let that guy dry. He's my attempt at uh, the beginning of a cruciform. For my curvilinear, which is usually a favorite of mine, I am just going to start with some circular, circular shapes. I think you guys get the idea. You're going to play. You're going to have fun. You're going to experiment. Um, you're going to kind of see what you can do with just paint. Um, I'm right now experimenting with both kind of that comp those compositional structures and obviously with some wet into wet paint mixing as well. Um, just because that is kind of where we're at in terms of the beginning portion of this phase. As these dry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to kind of explore uh, a little bit more some of the details that we can make um, over the top to kind of, you know, add some shapes, to add some background color, um, and to continue kind of pushing at some of these compositional structures. This will be the beginning, I think, of radiating. Right now it's just sort of a mess. Um, so go ahead, play, uh, have fun. Uh, make sure that you're, like I said, as they dry to go back and kind of add something else in there. Make sure you're thinking about value structure too. Right now my, my value structure is fairly limited on most of these, but like that always comes as you continue to work. Um, you know, I could pull out some lighter values like in this circle, curvilinear one with uh, a towel. Now, well, listen, I have some lighters, I have some darkers, but I'll have to come back and add some detail. So um, have fun today and tomorrow playing around with uh, some tiny uh, experiments, making sure that you create one for each of the different styles or different compositional structures uh, on the sheet, all 10. Have fun. Happy experimenting.